She has a podcast. You can check her out. It's Losing 100 Pounds with Corinne. Even if you don't have 100 pounds to lose, this is an amazing resource. But she has this whole program. You can go online, check her out. It's pnp411.com. And she's, she offers a daily journal, a weight loss journal, that prompts you to come up with every single day why you're worthy to take the time to do the planning. And when I first started doing this, this was kind of a difficult practice for me. I was like, I don't know, because I'm a good person. I don't know, because, you know, like I helped an old neighbor with, you know, something. I don't know. And it was really challenging. And I found that to be the hardest part of this, this daily journal. But it has been such a powerful exercise because now when I ask myself, why am I worthy to do any kind of self-care? Why am I worthy to take the time to plan my self-care? The answers are phenomenal. And when I read them back, it reaffirms that I have changed the way I think about myself. And I want that for you too. Because as you change the way you think about yourself, so much more opens up. Your brain opens up to all these different possibilities because you start to see yourself differently. And that's what happens when you start to generate that self-worth from within. Number three, buy something for yourself. Now, I know this is kind of a difficult concept. How is this going to help us generate self-worth? Well, honestly, because you probably don't. Because you probably carry around a lot of guilt when it comes to buying things for yourself, especially in the holiday season, right? How many times have you heard someone say like, oh, I want this such and such, but it's Christmas, so I'm going to wait till after Christmas. That is anti-self-care. That is anti-self-love. If there is something that you really want, you're, you're in the store and you're browsing around or you're online and you see something you want, buy it for yourself. I am advocating. I am giving you permission to do this because when you don't, your brain is training itself to learn that I'm not good enough to spend my own money on myself right? And this probably comes from like a lack mindset. If you think there's not enough money to go around or I don't have enough money to afford this thing I want for myself, if you are the last person on your list when it comes to purchases, that is going to reaffirm and ingrain a lack mindset. And when you do finally give yourself permission to buy that thing for yourself and do that, you know, expensive purchase just for yourself, this really interesting thing happens. You start to feel pride. You start to feel confidence. And you start to feel worthy. Number four, a great way to generate your own self-worth is to tell someone no. We've talked about this a lot on the podcast, but I'm going to repeat this probably every episode until everyone on the planet starts to really adhere to this, which is say no. You don't have to justify why. You don't have to explain yourself. If you don't want to go to grandma's this year, if you don't want to make the trip back home, just say no. Just Allow yourself, give yourself that permission to not sign up for things that you think you have to or you should do. If you're not really excited to go see grandma and all the uncles and aunts and cousins and, and whatever this year, don't go. Because when you're there, you're going to be in that mindset and people are going to pick up on it. They're going to feel it. They're going to feel it when you don't genuinely want to be spending time with these people, even if they're family and even if you do love them. You can love them and not want to fly a million miles across country to spend time with them. You could, you cannot want to spend your money on going to see them. That is 100% okay. You want to learn how to say no and you want to practice it. This is the best time of year to practice it. So you're not going to justify it. You're going to stand up for yourself and you're going to recognize when you do say no. And you're going to remember that it's okay and the whole world does not fall apart. You are not going to be disowned from your family because you say no. Will there be hurt feelings? Sure. Will there be discord? Probably. 
But that is a small price to pay, and believe me, it'll pass quickly, especially if you plan to spend time with them in the future when you want to. Number five, another way to generate your own self-worth is to stop putting yourself last. You train yourself how you feel about yourself. And if you have a negative self-image, if you think of yourself as like a bad person or a piece of crap or you have all these, these really bad thoughts about yourself and you say things to yourself that are really damaging, you have got to learn how to turn the volume down on that voice inside and start finding things about yourself that you can compliment and like. When you put yourself last, it often sounds like, um, let me just do this, this, and this, and this first. I'm going to go ahead and do da 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 first, and then I'll do self-care. I'm going to put the laundry away, do the dishes, make my menu plan, and then I'll take a bath. Well, the problem is you're reinforcing that you are last. And even though the first while... The first couple of times that you put yourself first and then do the chores, it feels a little weird at first, but then you're going to find that this wonderful switch happens. When you take the time to put yourself at the first of the list, you're the first priority. When it comes to the, the, the Christmas shopping, what you want comes first. When it comes to your schedule today, you know, doing a bath for yourself comes first and then the chores. You end up being able to be more productive and accomplish more when you operate from the place that you've taken care of you before you've taken care of everything else. It took me a long time to really understand that and to really get into that habit. But now, if there's a bunch of things that I have to do, I will absolutely choose the self-care first. I will absolutely take the time to do my journaling, to read, to listen to music that I like, to go for a walk, to tend to my, my health care, my fitness, my plans before I do anything else on the list because I'm able to accomplish more on the list when Chris is first. Number six, if you want an advanced level way to really generate self-worth and to make that stick, to really make that real for you, that you are worthy, that you are enough, that the way you show up right now with all of your flaws, with all of the things, the inadequacies, and all of the feelings you have about yourself, that you are perfect just the way you are and that you are worthy just the way you are right now is to create a bucket list. Because knowing what is important to you, it gives you a plan. And doing it changes your life. When you set an intention of like, these are the things I absolutely want to accomplish before my time runs out. And we don't know how much time we have. So the effort and the energy that you're spending on helping other people find their joy, their happiness, their socks that they've lost, their car keys they can't find, helping them solve their problems, being that listening ear, and not doing what you want to do is all going to feel like a waste when the time comes. When your ticket is called and it's your time to go, more often than not, people talk about the regret that they wish they would have done certain things. So create that bucket list, plan that marathon, go to counseling, do the yoga, um, go skydiving, visit Paris, eat the chocolate, whatever it is, whatever it is that you've been dying to do that, that is in your heart, that is so unique to you, create that bucket list and start making a plan on how you can accomplish some of that stuff. Because that's the joy of life. That's living. That's the thing that's going to make you wake up in the morning and be able to continue forward. It's going to help you feel like you're worthy when you're in pursuit of the things that you want to accomplish. And last but not least, if you really want to generate that internal self-worth and be self-sufficient when it comes to your own emotional well-being, 
I want you to create your fuck it list. So your fuck it list, if you're not aware, is a list of things, the expectations or the shoulds that everybody's put on you your entire life that just don't align with what you want to do. If everyone in your life is like, yeah, you need to go to college. Yeah, you need to get married. You need to have kids. You need to buy a house. You need to, you know, get a good job. You need to do this and that. Get your MBA. You know, you need to, you need to do all these things. You need to lose 20 pounds, whatever it might be. I want you to create a fuck it list that's like, fuck it, I'm not going to do that. And this is so empowering because you start to, when you create this list and you sit down and you really think about the things that you've been told your whole life that you should do and you decide, you know what, that is not for me and I don't have to do it. It frees up all this energy and this time that you've been spending thinking about how to do it and how inadequate you are for not having done it by now. You know, if everyone in your life is like, you need to buy a house, you need to get married, you can really create that fuck it list and say, you know what? No, I don't. I want to live in a van down by the river, (laughs) you know, or whatever it might be that speaks to you as a life purpose. When you create that fuck it list and you get rid of all those shoulds or have tos, you free yourself from the obligation and the internal background worry that's been going on about having not accomplished those things that you've been told all along that you need to do. And honestly, there really is nothing. There's no have to in this world. There is nothing that you have to do other than take care of yourself. Because when you don't take care of yourself, you become an emotional burden on everyone around you. And that's what we're trying to really get to is that self-sufficiency, the ability to create all the emotional stability that you need from within. Because you cannot control what other people are going to say. You cannot control what other people are going to think. And you certainly cannot control what other people are doing. And and if anything, this last couple of years has taught us, you cannot control what's going to happen in the world around you. So being able to have that foundation of generating your own self-worth is going to give you back some of that control that I feel like we all have experienced loss of. So if you really struggle with self-worth, if this is something you're like, Chris, you're preaching to me, I, I really have a hard time with this, please don't just passively listen to my amazing radio voice. Do some of these things today. Make a plan for some kind of self-care that you're going to do this weekend. Think of something that you really want to accomplish. What's a bucket list item that you've always wanted to do? And start making an active plan on how you can start doing that today. What little thing could you do today to get one step closer to that? You know, what's something you could buy yourself this weekend that's going to really make you feel good about yourself? If you're struggling with, like, body image issues right now, Maybe an accessory, right? Because clothes are clothes don't always generate that feeling of worthiness, and they tend to, especially now that we're all shopping online and you can't. There's not a lot of stores you can walk into and try clothes on now. But you can buy yourself a pair of like really rad tennis shoes, or you know, a cute hat, or some kind of scarf, or some sort of accessory that can really make you feel good and feel confident. Or maybe there's something you've you've an event or some kind of thing that you want to do that's kind of expensive and you've always been like, I can't really afford that. Go buy it and watch how it changes how you feel about yourself. Because no matter how many times you post on Instagram and you get a thumbs up on Facebook or somebody likes your TikTok or shares your, you know, your, your show or whatever, it's not going to give you the long-lasting self-love that you truly desire. And that's going to really be sustainable. Because, yeah, you might get that like on Facebook, but two seconds later, you're looking for another one. Whereas when you generate that self-love from within, that self-worth from within, you're flying high all day, baby. And I'm living proof of that. All right, that's it for this show. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have a story you'd like to share and you want to be on the show, please email me. It's Chris, K-R-I-S, at selfcareissexy.com. Okay, we've got some really great content coming your way, so stay tuned. And remember that self-care is sexy. We're giving you permission to put yourself first. <laughs>